Hey, what's up guys? This is Johnny, back with the Kings of War channel. This video is going to show you how to make dirt cheap movement trays. In the last video, we covered how to rebase the D&D minis. So basically, um, we're going to be using cardboard. This cardboard is free from your post office. They have packaging boxes, uh, shipping boxes, and uh, yeah, so that's free. I have a template that I made. I'm going to be making a whole bunch more. I just kind of came up with an easier way here. But uh, it's five inches wide and two and a quarter this way. And that's for a 10 man troop. So uh, we're going to need that. We are going to need some super glue that I covered in the last video. My favorite kind of super glue which is uh, this. You can go check it out in the last video if you want to know exactly what kind it is. Then we're going to be using uh, skinny sticks from Walmart. This is like a dollar. Um, with the skinny sticks, you want to find some. Uh, some of these are warped, as you can see right there. You want to find ones that lay flat. I'm just kind of, as I go through these, I just kind of get rid of the ones that are warped because I'm never going to use them for anything. But it's a pretty simple process. What we're going to do, let's get this out of the way. Lay that right there. We're going to lay this across the front of it and mark it with a pencil. We're going to use our tool that we cut miniatures off sprues with. Try to get just as straight of a cut as you can. Just like that. It's pretty easy. And uh, yeah, we're just going to hit this with some super glue here. Just like that. We're going to get it onto the front. Now I let it hang off just a little bit because the back of this can always be trimmed. And the whole thing is going to get flocked anyways. But yeah, it's pretty much already dry. Um, we're going to do the same here. We're going to put this on for the sides. Measure it. Get as straight of a cut as possible. That'll work for that one. And remember guys, like I was just saying, there's going to be flocking all over this whole thing. So uh, if you think that it, when you're making it, if you think that it looks a little funny or you know everything doesn't even up just perfectly, you're not going to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that. And there we go. So we're going to very quickly glue these on. I just put a couple drops of super glue. It's really all you need. Put that on there. Uh, one tip is when you cut. Let me grab one. Let's say we let's say we're using this one and we make our cut right here. Use this factory cut end to line up right there. That way you have a straight line up for sure. You know, in case you cut a little bit accidentally diagonal, uh, it'll be at the back. But yeah, there we go. There's the basics of it. Now you might be wondering if this is going to warp. Uh, none of mine have. Because there's a little technique that you're going to use. And we'll get to that in just a moment. The next step is glue. We are going to get an old brush right here. I always just, 
after you do this a couple times and you make sure you clean it out with water and stuff, it'll still be a little hard. So I just take the ends and I go like this. And that loosens it up pretty good. Now what you're going to do is just shoot glue all along the edge of the cardboard. And what that's going to do... Oh, fatality. What that's going to do is kind of fill in the edge of that cardboard. Again, it's all getting... Uh, it's all getting flocked anyways, but it just every little step helps. Every little bit of detail helps. <clears throat> so let's talk about, uh, while I'm doing this, let's talk about the warping issue that some people may have had when they've used cardboard before. The whole thing I learned from terrain making, there's that side. We got two more sides to go. The whole thing that I learned from terrain making is the key. Of course, you need to use the proper basing with your terrain pieces, but the whole key is when you load it up with the glue is to get it directly under a fan. I learned very on, I made a really beautiful piece and let it set overnight on it was like a lid I had like a lid from a spray can and I had the big piece on there and as it sat overnight it warped like this like my hand is doing the weight of it and the wetness just sitting on the board all night made it warp so um, anything like this that you make, like this right here, just doing this little glue is nothing, but when we flock these and we paint them, we're gonna, as soon as we do a step at a time, we're gonna get it under a fan. Sorry if this is kind of rambling on, I'm working and talking at the same time, but um, you're gonna wanna get it directly under a fan, like immediately. And if that water and glue and stuff doesn't have the chance to make it the stuff warp, I'm doing the warping with my hand again. <laughs> but if, if it if it is dried quick enough, it won't have a chance to warp, is what I'm trying to say. So let's take a look at where I have. Here's my whole work table here. This is just a couple of my flocking bins. I have all of these and stuff like that. Try to keep a very neat work area, but right here is my drying area and flocking area. Um this is very crucial. You know, I set stuff on here and I get that fan on full blast as soon as possible. So basically, now that I've rambled on, here's what we got. We're going to wait for this glue to dry and then we're going to paint them. We'll be back for the next step. Okay guys, let's look at the next step. These, as I told you before, went directly under a fan. Um, it didn't take them too long to dry, just ate some dinner upstairs and came down in the dry to where the glue was clear. Next we're going to do some painting and these will go directly back under the fan. So I'm just using a big old brush and I'm using Castellan Green from the Citadel line, but you can really use anything you want. You can use brown, you can use whatever you want. I just enjoy this right here, this color. It works for me. And if this gets too boring, I'll just speed up the video. But we're only gonna put one coat. Gonna make sure that you get everything. And then we wanna go in about that far and that's it that's all I do for mine I don't paint the whole inside or anything like that because our troops are going to be covering it I'm going to paint the edges real good just like this Just like that. 
And we're already almost done. And as I said before, don't forget these will go directly back into the fan. Because we do not want any warpage. On the back, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come about this far. And you'll see why later in the video, why we do that. Because sometimes the trays, the miniatures might only come up to about here. And that very back edge will need to be flocked. So now I'm just going to go around, kind of smooth everything out. Uh, this paint is a really good paint and covers really well. But you just want to double check your work here. Now I used to double coat all this to coat everything but there's no need for that so yeah um, I'm gonna do the other one and then these will go back under the fan till completely dried and I uh, will catch you guys in the next video which will be flocking everything see ya